Mark Griffith here and welcome to RC Hacker. Now today I'm going to scratch build a multi-rotor and it's going to have nine engines. You can call it a nonocopter if you like. It's going to have eight main engines and sort of an H configuration and then one more with a servo on it to add a bit of extra yaw control. And what I'm going to build it out of is basically balsa wood. This is a one centimeter square piece of balsa wood. Um, I'm going to have to make up another length because I, I don't have two, but um, I've got, this is the idea, one of these lengths, and these are barbecue skewers. And I'm gonna use these barbecue skewers to do like a um, truss structure and have lots of triangles to, so I can make a really lightweight and strong, hopefully strong structure. Now I don't expect this to be strong enough to survive fairly big crashes, okay? so. This is going to be something that I want to carry cameras with and I want to make a development platform to put bigger cameras on and it's the sort of thing that you don't want to crash with your expensive camera on board. So I'm not going for um, strength for crashes but I do want it rigid enough so it flies well. And of course the lighter you make something the better it's going to fly and the more payload you can add as well. I've used uh, this, um, these same motors and ESCs that I'm going to use. These are 12 amp ESCs with Simon K on them, of course. I think now you get uh, you can get these um, Afro, Afro ESCs which have the same firmware on. And these are little uh, 2300 kV motors with a little five by three props, which I like using. Now, I'm not saying these are the best motors for the job, but I've had good luck with these, they're cheap, and once these props are balanced, the small propellers are actually really quite good. They're quite quiet, um, they're small enough that they won't cut your fingers off, and when you balance them right, you get very few vibrations, and I find that I have, I can strap a camera onto um, any multi-rotor made in this way, and I don't need to do any vibration reduction for the camera or anything like that. I don't need any sort of weird wire setups and stuff. Basically because the motors are small and they spin really fast. And this one has nine motors on it, which adds extra reliability as well. I can actually have any motor, any one of the motors on this can fail and the thing will keep flying quite happily. And in a previous version that I had, that I had going, um, back in Ecuador, which I was flying quite often. I didn't do many videos on it, but it was built a lot heavier and I did have quite a few, um, I had a few engine failures and when I was flying FPV, I didn't even notice at the time. So it wasn't until I landed that I actually noticed that these motors um, were failing. So let's do the build. I'm going to record this and narrate over it afterwards. And I'm just gonna cover the key points as we go along and um, let's go. First thing we're going to start with is our motor spacing. Now this all depends on the size of the props that you're using. I'm using tiny little five by three props and I want those fairly close together and we're just gonna take a measurement and then propagate that along each of the arms. So we've got two arms that go either side of our multi-rotor and we want four marks along there evenly spaced to where we'll place our motors. Now we'll just cut the end off. You need to use a very sharp knife. My knife here is pretty blunt and didn't work very well. So get yourself a sharp hobby knife. It always works much better with balsa. Now our motor mounts are going to be placed about there. So you get the idea and we're gonna have one arm each side. So eight motors on each side. I just use some side cutters to score the motors there, to score the mounts there on each side so I could break off the tabs that I didn't need in order just to save a little bit of weight. There we go, eight mounts ready to go. Now, if you don't have a set square, you know, you can just do this by eye, but I just wanted to put my markings on both of my arms so, so they're nice and even and symmetrical. Finally, an arrow at the front just so we know which is the top and which is the front so we can easily uh, put our 
arms back in the same place when we need to. Right, this is the center spar and it is where everything else on the multi-rotor frame is attached to. So I'm gonna place it about there and we'll, we'll just sort of estimate our length for now. I've sort of got the design in my head. Certainly when you go to do your design, you'll um, have an idea of the shape that you want it. I'm using a hacksaw here to cut through. Um, probably much easier than a blunt knife. This is our yaw servo and our yaw me mechanism. This is going to go at the end of the main frame and I'm just cutting out a little notch to mount that in later on. So it'll mount about like that and we'll glue that in place later. Now you want to find some paper so you can use it as a plan and draw all over it. I had two A3 sheets and I stuck them together to make, make a bigger piece. You, depending on your design you may need it a bit bigger. Now roughly place your parts. So this is the center spar and the two arms. And then we'll trace around our center spar. You want to trace it around it in such a way that you can reposition it easily on the paper when you need to. And then position and trace around one of the arms only. Not strictly necessary, but you may want to mark just where the motors go as well, just so you can get the orientation right later on. Now the tricky bit. We want to mark the center line of our main spar. So I'm going to draw it in with pencil first. And then take your hobby knife and use the back side of the blade and just lightly score the paper. You don't want to cut through it. You just want to score it enough so it makes folding the piece of paper in half really, really easy. Once you have your fold, you can then use your hobby knife again to actually punch holes through both sheets of paper so you can mark the other side of where that arm is. Mark it at all the key points. Now turn the paper over and then you can redraw that arm on the other side and once it's unfolded you'll end up with a perfect mirror image. Now I'm roughly positioning what I want to be the keel. Now it's entirely up to you where you put it, but I'm going to put it about this high and you know, let's cut that to length about there. Again, a hacksaw, I found that much easier than using the hobby knife. Okay, so I'm now laying out the main spar and the keel and we're just going to place our skewers down the main thing you want to do is form triangles when you're constructing this frame because triangles give you your strength. But first I'm just going to do either end of, of this part and uh, mark in pencil where these skewers are going to go so I can drill the first holes in my frame. Now when drilling the holes I used a drill bit that was pretty much the same diameter as my skewers, maybe a little bit larger but about the same diameter. And you don't have to be super accurate with your hole drilling. As long as they're in the general direction and fairly straight, concentrate on getting it through the center of your uh, your frame parts, of course. But you, you want to do a test piece first. A test piece always helps, um, rather than drilling on your good frame bits. And you want to be able to move the skewers in and out of those holes with just a little bit of force. They want to be firm, but they don't want to be flopping around sort of thing. And that you don't want to have to hammer them in or anything like that. But you'll find that the balsa wood is actually quite soft. So even if it is a little bit small, you can force them in and they'll slide in quite happily. Now, don't start gluing anything in place yet, but, you know, position your skewers. We'll position these two and then we'll complete the triangles on each side. And we will actually get everything right and get our frame mostly built before we start gluing anything together. Likewise, so we can do later adjustments, don't cut your skewers completely flush at this stage, but do cut those ends off so they don't poke your eyes out. And be careful as you're cutting them off with uh, side cutters like this because they can shoot quite a distance.
A safer method of cutting the skewers is to roll the knife over the point that you want to cut out and then just breaking it and it'll break right on that score mark. Once we have the keel skewers in place, we can cut them off at the top surface so we can lay the keel flat on the plan. With the arms and the skewers properly aligned, we can lay out the majority of our skewers and mark where we want to drill all of our holes. Now I wouldn't suggest drilling holes handheld like this with anything much larger than a Dremel. If you're going to be doing any sort of construction with larger pieces of wood and using a bigger drill, I'd put the piece of wood in a vise. And you may find that putting it in a small vise will help you with accuracy as well. I've had a fair bit of practice, but um, probably using a vise is a better bet in this case. With a little bit of pushing and pulling, we should be able to adjust all our skewers so that the frame lays flat on the plan. Now once it's flat on the plan, we are ready to glue the skewers in place. Now in this case, I used CA glue, I used a medium CA glue, because I didn't want this to move much and I was going for a really lightweight structure. But if you're using something heavier than balsa wood, in this case, I reckon the balsa wood is probably only a little bit stronger than the skewers, but on a previous frame, I had a hardwood um, arms and the base of the keel and the main spar was all hardwood, and the skewers were much weaker than those parts. And what I found was after a crash, the skewers would break and the hardwood main spars were fine, but replacing those skewers if they were glued in with CA glue was really quite difficult so what you can do is you can put them in place with hot glue instead don't use too much you only need to use enough so they don't slide in and out and then if you do have a crash those skewers will break and to, to remove them and replace them you just need up need to heat up the wood a little bit with a hot air gun and they slide right out and you can put a new skewer straight back in so if, if you're um intending on crashing it which everyone does crash i'd suggest using uh, hot glue it is a little bit heavier so remember hot glue does weigh quite a bit so don't use too much of it now the last four skewers will complete the frame and they'll add extra rigidity between the keel and the side arms now i used a set square here just for some final adjustments and getting it straight and then we can glue the final skewers in place And a final attack with the Dremel and we can clean up all our excess bamboo skewers that we don't need. And our final weight is about 65 grams, which at the time I was pretty surprised with. I was pretty happy with that. Now I didn't want to compromise the strength of my arms any more than I had to by drilling more holes and putting screws in them. So I decided to glue them down with uh, CA glue first just to hold them in place. And then I use some sewing thread to lash each motor mount down. And you basically just tie a loop in one end and then wrap it around like so. And use a little dab of CA at the end just to glue that thread in place. The final lashing is really quite strong. And if you need it stronger, you just do more turns, more turns of your thread. And they're also very easy to remove. All you need to do is cut the thread and they peel off quite easily. Okay, so that's our frame pretty well done and it's very light. It was about 65 grams before I put the motor mounts on and then 75 grams afterwards, which is for something with uh, nine motors, like that is absolutely nothing. And there's very little flex in it. Like it's, it's um, really, quite rigid and pretty straight. The bamboo skewers themselves aren't straight, but because we did it all on that flat so surface, we know that everything else is fairly flat anyway. But don't worry, if you make this and it's a little bit crooked, don't worry too much because it's a multi-rotor and you can always trim it out and the computer will um, compensate for any inaccuracies, inaccuracies that you have. And my first version was not square at all. It was all over the place. But honestly, it doesn't really matter. Now, 
obviously I'm going to fit these out with all these motors. Um, I do have to test these all again, so that's going to take a little while. I'm going to test these, put my motors on, and as a uh, flight controller, I'm going to use a KK2, and that I'm going to mount right there in the middle. So that will be about at the center of um, center of thrust. So just back a little bit to compensate for the rear motor and I'm going to mount that there and I'll probably put a square of balsa wood there. And the battery on this, this is the beauty of this design, the battery goes underneath here and I'll just strap it on with a piece of uh, Velcro around there and then I can move it back and forth like this and that will allow me to change the center of gravity. So say if I put a big heavy camera on the front, I can move the battery way back here and that, that'll keep the um, center of gravity at the uh, same center of thrust. And of course, the yaw motor will go right here on the back. I actually made a mistake here. I, I got this piece, the center piece upside down, so the yaw motor doesn't quite fit in the way I intended, but that'll work a treat. Anyway, so I'm gonna put all the motors on and wire up all the electrics. It's not going to be very interesting, but basically putting the motors on and um, placing the ESCs, and depending on the length of the wires will be where I'll put the ESCs and that sort of thing. But it's not gonna quite look as pretty as this once it's done. It's certainly not gonna win any prizes for good looks, but it's gonna be functional. That's the main aim with this um, airframe. Let's go. And we're finished. Now it's all decked out with all the electronics and motors and ESCs. It's all programmed, it's all ready to fly. I'm going to have to do another video just to show how to program this. It involves using the custom mixer on the KK2 and that's worth a, a, a separate video on its own. So I'll do that and link after this. And I've got on here, I've got the OpenLRS um, system. This out the back is the antenna. This is our uh, V antenna. I've done a video on that previously. And I've got two Mobius cameras here. One's facing towards the rear and one's facing towards the front. So when we do a maiden flight, we'll be able to see the uh, the, the uh, tail motor working and all that sort of thing. So hopefully we can get some good shots out of that. And because I've got those cameras on the back, that means we've got quite a lot of weight um, that we needed to add to the front. And I've got a 2,200 milliamp hour three cell battery on the front here. It's not sitting where I designed it to, but when I do start using this, I'll have cameras on the front and then I can move the camera to the back and it'll balance out really nice. Anyway, uh, check out the links at the end of this video. If you've liked this, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, give it a thumbs down and please comment and tell your friends. Cheers, I'll catch you next time.